Hello and welcome to this short video from the Institute of Business Ethics in which Simon Webley, Research Director, is going to give an overview of the IBE's latest business ethics briefing. This briefing presents the key findings, uh, key and relevant findings from nine different surveys from 2014 which are on a business ethics theme. Uh, this briefing is free to download from the IBE's website www.ibe.org.uk. After Simon has shared his thoughts, I'll be back to pose him a few questions. Simon. Yes, uh, I'm um, going to really look at these nine different uh, uh, surveys, and the point of them all is that they give an insight into how uh, business and business behavior, business ethics, um, is changing over a short period, and in some cases quite a long period, and this will give us a good idea of the way in which people look at business, and particularly about how business is done. So, the first of these um, is uh, about trust. Um, the Edelman Trust Barometer has been going for quite a number of years now, and the latest survey which, which we look at show that trust uh, in business is um, going down, it's evaporating to a certain uh, amount. And if you look at this by sector, you'll find that although the tech sector technology sector and electronics sector are, are the most trusted, they are um, falling generally. The um, bottom of the trust uh, list uh, remain uh, the media, which is not trusted much, and as you would expect, banks. Um, there's also uh, some indication that distrust is increasing amongst the um, larger developing countries, known as the BRIC countries. Um, and an interesting little vignette is that in most um, countries of the world, the family-owned business is the most, um, is the most um, trusted, whereas big business and state-owned businesses are still falling in trust. Uh, so turning to a specific issue of anti-corruption, the Dow Jones uh, survey um, interviewed compliance professionals and showed that there was quite a bit of progress over the uh, recent times on uh, anti-corruption programs. Um, eight out of ten say they have these programs in place, but less are doing um, what we call ethical due diligence on new business partners. And um, there also seems to be increasing doubt amongst businesses about banning uh, facilitation payments, which in some countries is illegal and others is not. Freshfields uh, did a survey on people uh, being able to uh, blow the whistle or speak up. Um, and they uh, show that the people who are most likely to uh, be the subject of a, of a whistleblow are middle and senior managers. And this is true uh, across the globe. Um, However, uh, there is some uh, confusion about how companies uh, look at this. Some see it as very important, about one in 10, um, but three in 10 actively discourage it, uh, partly because of the problems associated with it, namely retaliation. Deloitte's looked at reputation risk, uh, and their um, survey generally was that this is now being increasingly seen as very important. You can't insure against uh, reputation risk. Um, and more and more companies are taking it up as a top concern and doing various things that will try and mitigate that risk. Uh, turning to specifically the UK, the Institute of Business Ethics uh, did its regular survey of uh, trends about what British public think about uh, the ethics of in, in business, and um, uh, the feeling is it hasn't changed a great deal um, uh, over the long period we've been doing it. Ten years we've been we've been doing it. About um, a, a third think that um, its business is less ethical. About a third, about the same over that period, and a quarter think that it's more ethical. The key issues uh, identified by the general public were. Um, corporate taxation, um, corporate pay, particularly at high levels, and 
the availability of a culture to enable people to speak up if they feel um, unhappy about something that, that's going on. PwC uh, did a survey on economic crime um, and they are seeing that uh, recorded uh, um, ev events involving what might be described as economic crime have uh, fallen a bit now and uh, over the years and um, uh, they, um, although the UK is still at roughly people thinking of about 44 percent, that's higher than the global average of 37 percent. Um, and the uh, interesting thing about that survey is that it shows that the crime committed by insiders, that is people who are employed, is on the rise compared with those um, who sort of tap in from the outside. In the United States, the uh, Ethics Research Center um, do a regular survey on workplace conduct. And for the third successive year, misconduct in the workplace has fallen. Um, uh, however, um, if you break that number down, you'll find that there has been some increase amongst bad behavior amongst managers. <coughs> About 25% um, were observed to have fallen into this category. Then finally, two um, surveys from the uh, SCCE, um, Society for Compliance and Corporate Ethics. Uh, one was on an ethics program or ethics programs in businesses and the other was the way in which um, ethics officers and people responsible for it uh, <coughs> relate to their boards. Uh, SECE uh, say that 93% of the larger business uh, have codes now, um, but, very, but less than half of these rev revise them or review them in a, within a three year period. A uh, large portion, 96%, do provide training uh, for their ethics programs. Uh, the uh, questions about the relation of the ethics officer, officer and clients officers to the board is that about half in uh, the US report directly to the board. Uh, we know that that number is much less in the United Kingdom, one way or the other. But we also know that those that do have direct access, those businesses where there is direct access, um, tend to have a, a, a better culture of integrity um, because of the effect of board's um, example and the cascading down of uh, a, 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 a sort of um, an integrity culture into into lower into the lower bands of the um, business. Is, um, is more likely to happen. So we've looked at some global figures, some UK uh, trends and some US trends. And um, it does, I suppose, um, going back to it, concern us that trust in business is falling generally and that we're pleased to see that various methods being used to deter um, corruption are uh, on, on the rise. So what questions would you like to ask me? Thank you, Simon, uh, that's for that insight. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, so just a few, a few questions, if I may. Um, firstly, uh, the FCC survey that you were just talking about does report mm -hmm. that there is a good relationship between the chief ethics officer and the board uh, in the US. Um, how would you say this relationship is, is mirrored in the UK or elsewhere around the world? Well, there usually is uh, one or even two steps between the person in charge of corporate responsibility or business ethics and the board. They often have to report up through uh, a compliance team or legal team, um, and uh, occasionally you're getting, or increasingly, you're getting some direct relationship with a board committee uh, that's there. But on the whole, uh, they have to go through somebody else before they can raise a, an issue with the, at the highest level of, of the company. Um, we were looking for that trend to, um, to stop, or, or if you like, uh, for more direct access to boards by people in charge of, of business ethics uh, because of the evidence that that really makes the, uh, the whole um, program within an organization more effective. 
Okay, great, thank you. Um, the Deloitte survey on reputation risk is also an interesting one. As I think you mentioned, you, you cannot uh, buy insurance against uh, to guard your reputation. Um, what practical steps can you uh, offer for companies who may be seeking to self-insure, so to speak, against the ethical and integrity risks mentioned? Well, um, I mean, clearly, is to make the uh, program um, that they have to try and counter the likelihood of a, a reputation hit um, more effective, in particularly in those groups of people where um, this is likely to happen. Um, in the age of social media, it is much more likely that information about what's going on in an organization will get out into the general public and be snapped up by the media. And that risk is pretty high. So one specific thing people can do is to give guidance about the use of social media by all their staff in relation to what's going on in their business. Uh, there are probably other things to do, but that's one practical thing. Excellent, thank you. And finally, uh, perhaps a related question. Um, the Edelman Trust Barometer shows that levels of trust in business are falling. Um, can you offer a quick suggestion as to how companies may be able to rebuild this trust? Well, it's one of the most difficult things to do once you've uh, lost trust, is to, is to regain it. And um, research generally shows that it takes quite a long period, up to five years, to change. Um, you start at the top with it, uh, but to get that cascaded down into middle management and lower levels takes a very long time. Um, I mean, it, it's a cliche to say that money is a very dominant theme in, in business, to make money. But it's how you make that money which is going to uh, affect your reputation. And more concentration on the how as opposed to the what uh, would make a, a, a real difference. And produce some form of a better assurance that there, you won't get a reputation hit. But um, it, it, it's at the moment um, very uncertain as to, as to where information will, will get out about the business. So the best thing to do is to see that the business is run ethically and properly so that that risk is uh, reduced. Fine, and thank you. Um, very fascinating answers. And thank you for uh, yeah, the thought and the insight that you've obviously put into that. Um, I think to sum up, uh, we can say that there's a mixture of both positive and some concerning findings, um, but that was a fascinating insight into the business ethics playing field from 2014. Uh, so also thank you for listening in. Um, as you can see on the, sc uh, the screen here, the survey can be downloaded from the IBE website, um, but please do feel free to get in contact uh, if you wish to discuss these findings or for any further information. So thank you.